is ready for business. Hello and welcome to Noir Marche's country profile. So in this video, we're going to look at Sierra Leone, its past, its challenges and its future economic prospects moving forward. If you want more content like this from us in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are on a mission to connect Africa's businesses, entrepreneurs with startups and creatives all over the world. So go ahead and download the app. In return, you'll be able to network with entrepreneurs all over Africa, meet suppliers and promote your business. Thank you for your support and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Sierra Leone is a country with a rich history, a diverse cultural structure and one of the most tolerant religious communities in the world. The country is bordered by Guinea and Liberia and it benefits from a tropical climate. However, this isn't to say that Sierra Leone hasn't had its challenges. Years of civil war and political instability has meant that the country has long been an area of caution for investors. The civil war ended in 2002, but this wasn't the end of Sierra Leone's challenges. The country was caught in the grip of the Ebola pandemic in 2014. This ended in 2016. And though there has been a resurgence of Ebola in some of Sierra Leone's neighbouring countries, at the time of writing, there has been no confirmed cases of Ebola in Sierra Leone. The coronavirus pandemic has further frustrated the situation. And more recently, on the 24th of March 2021, 7,000 Sierra Leoneans lost their lives in a fire that completely destroyed the slum of Susan's Bay. Sierra Leone is ranked 163 out of 190 on the World Bank's Doing Business Index. But despite these challenges, it would be silly to ignore Sierra Leone's potential. Against popular belief, nearly half of Sierra Leone's working age population engages in agriculture. After slowing to 3.5% in 2018, economic growth in Sierra Leone was projected to rebound to 4.8% in 2019. This has been driven by increased activities in agriculture and construction, as well as the assumption of iron ore production and exports. Growth in these labour-intensive sectors could make a dent on poverty, which remains widespread in the country. Spurred by increased investments and expansions in the crops, livestock and fishery subsectors. In recent years, economic growth has been driven by mining, particularly iron ore. The country's principal exports are iron ore, diamond and rutile, and the economy is vulnerable to fluctuations in international prices. In February 2020, Sierra Leone's president, Julius Baito, made the case for further investing in the sector, explaining, we are an open, peaceful and stable democracy. We are a free market that values private sector investment. We do not believe in the business of government to govern business, but we believe it is our business as a government to, to strengthen the business ecosystem and make it conducive for prime investments. President Bio laid out a roadmap to achieving this through fiscal reforms, legal and regulatory issues including the harmonization of laws relating to mining, public and private partnerships in infrastructure and technology. Sierra Leone's reliance on commodities means that continued economic growth will depend on rising commodity prices. However, non-mining activities will remain challenged by poor infrastructure. Sierra Leone ranks 181 out of 190 in generating electricity, but there is some optimism with power sector projects speculated to provide some additional electricity in the near future. The growth and services industry has also been a bit slower than expected due to weaker performances in tourism, transport and communication. So what are the opportunities here? Sierra Leone has a growing domestic market and a young population. The average age in Sierra Leone is 18, though the country has an overall position of 163. It ranks quite favourably with regards to starting a business. The country also has a lot of NGOs working within the country and a growing labour intensive industry. In our view, this presents a significant opportunity in agriculture, mining and education. If we take agriculture for example, while Sierra Leone continues to advance to more technological focused means of land cultivation, the country will be reliant on traditional labour intensive methods. This plays to Sierra Leone's strength in having a young population. A growing domestic market means that there is a ready-made market for produce. Sierra Leone is also a signatory of African Continental Free Trade Area. The AFCFTA officially entered into force on May the 30th, 2019 and aims to create a single market for goods and services with free movement of people and capital expand intra-Africa trade and enhance African competitiveness globally. 
AFCFTA will create a continent-wide custom union and remove tariffs of 90% of traded goods. This presents a massive future opportunity for those seeking to export produce to neighboring Guinea and Liberia. Emerging industries and a young population all require educated staff to carry out primary functions. The presence of NGOs and the government's commitment to education presents an opportunity to those seeking to create vocational training programs suited for Sierra Leone's developing industries and will support in paving the way for an emerging middle class. Finally, mining. Though out of reach on most and controversial in its own right, partnership opportunities remain present for those seeking to work with local companies. But these are just our opinions. Let's hear yours. Have you started a business in Sierra Leone? What do you think are the opportunities coming out of Sierra Leone? Continue the conversation over the new Amarche app. Meet some Sierra Leone businesses. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Sierra Leone is ready for business. We are doing quite a lot to change the narrative. Um, we've had a difficult past from the war to Ebola and other disasters. We want to change that narrative. We are creating an enabling environment, a new ecosystem that will support businesses so those who invest in Sierra Leone can have returns on their investment and be able to repatriate it anywhere else in the world. So we are changing the laws. We are um, uh, putting in institutions that can give you the security and the confidence and trust in the system to want to invest in Sierra Leone. We are ready for business and we want it to come.